Greetings, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. John F. Kennedy once said that we, not by our choice, but by providence, have received the role of a watchman for liberty and freedom around the world. But he also added that we have to walk worthy of that power, because unless God looks after a city, the watchman toils in vain. On a recent trip, I picked up a book at a bookstore at the airport, which is titled Prayers of the Presidents. Prayers of the Presidents. And this interesting little book includes biographies of all the American presidents and short quotes from prayers and inspirational thoughts they have had. Let me read to you from one of them. I have always believed that this anointed lamp was set apart in an uncommon way, that a divine plan placed this great continent here between the oceans to be found by people from every corner of the earth who had a special love of faith and freedom. Our pioneers asked that he would work his will in our daily lives, so America would be a land of morality, fairness, and freedom. This was said by none other than Ronald Reagan. Now let me read to you another quote from another of America's great presidents. It is a duty of nations as well as of men to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. This president went on to say, We have been recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched us and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined, in the deceitfulness of our hearts, that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. This was stated by Abraham Lincoln. And how relevant and how accurate is that statement today? Do we really pray to the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Jesus Christ? Or do we pray to some other God who cannot help us, as the Bible clearly tells us? And do we walk humbly before God and do we keep his commandments? Notice this quote from William McKinley, another one of America's presidents, that what he had to say, our faith teaches us that there is no safer reliance than upon the God of our fathers, who has so singularly favored the American people in every national trial, and who will not forsake us so long as we obey his commandments and walk humbly in his footsteps. But do we actually do that? Do we have reason to believe that everything will get better? Just this week I read some articles, people talking about that the Iraq war is going to be won, that there's never ever going to be a world depression anymore, that the temporary default of mortgages and mortgage companies is just that, temporary, that we have the best health care system in the world, that the dollar will always be the strongest currency around the world. But it is good to be optimistic. But it's not good to throw reality out of the door. We have to look at the situation in a very real and accurate way. And so I like to quote to you, my friends, 
something which God told ancient Israel. It's written in the 26th chapter in the book of Leviticus, the third book of Moses. But God didn't just speak to ancient Israel, because first of all, everything which is written in the Old Testament is written for our benefit, is written for our admonition, as the Apostle Paul said in the New Testament, so that we can learn from those examples. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. And what he told ancient Israel, he is telling us today. So notice what he told ancient Israel. He said, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season, and the land shall yield its produce. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. Is that the situation we are having today? I dare to say not at all. And so God went on to say to ancient Israel, but if you do not obey me, and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, I will also do this to you. And now God is speaking to ancient Israel, but he is also speaking to us today. And if we are in that kind of a category where we do not like to keep God's commandments with joy and with gladness of heart, then he said he will do this to us. I will even appoint terror over you. Terrorism is not an invention of the 21st century. God said already to ancient Israel, he will bring terrorism upon them. And he goes on to say, and I will bring upon you wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and no matter how good our health care system is, when God does do that, nothing will prevent it, and nothing will heal it. He goes on to say, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And then he goes on to say, and I will break the pride of your power. That pride Abraham Lincoln talked about, thinking that we brought it upon ourselves, that we created all these great accomplishments, whereas it was God who gave it to us. And it is God who can take it away from us. God goes on to say, your land shall not yield its produce, and I will bring a sword against you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. People today are saying, the United States of America will never be defeated. It's too big, it's too powerful, it's too great. But when God withdraws his protection from us, and when he will carry out what he said he will do unless we yield to him, then it's going to happen. And notice how terrible this situation is going to develop. He says, I will lay your cities waste, and I will bring the land to desolation. Do we realize, my friends, that God is prophesying here that unless we repent, unless we turn back to him, unless we walk humbly in front of our God, the God of the Bible, he will allow nuclear weapons to be launched against us, laying waste our cities, bringing desolation to the land. Those optimistic viewpoints I talked about earlier could come to pass. But they will not come to pass unless we turn around and unless we follow God's commands with gladness of heart, recognizing where our power, where our wealth, where our strength comes from. We have prepared a special booklet. It is titled, The Fall and Rise of Britain and America. Because let me tell you, my friends, those prophecies which I just read to you from the book of Leviticus, although they were directed at ancient Israel, have a bearing towards us today, the United States of America, in a way you might not even realize. Our booklet explains why those prophecies are so critically important for us to, for us to understand. Those words of the presidents, which I have read earlier, are very relevant today. 
The words of the Bible, which I read to you just a moment ago, are extremely, crucially relevant today. It is high time we wake up to understand how we live and what we need to do. This booklet will also tell you the fall and rise of America and Britain, what God expects of you, because how can you live a way which is pleasing to God? How can you abide by the commandments of God's Word, the Bible? So please read our free booklets and think about what we have discussed today. The American presidents, which I have quoted, had an interesting understanding of what was going on then, but these quotes are so much more relevant today as to what is going on in the United States of America and around the world. Thanks very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.